Hello Stampers! I've got a pretty little fun fold card for you today and this one is using the brand new Hills of Tuscany stamp set. Now this stamp set has everything in it to create just lots and lots of scenes. So I was excited to get my hands on this and we're going. I'm going to take you through it and how I used it for the first time today. So um, we'll start with our little main panel here. Now all the panel sizes are down below this video. Just click more under the description and you'll see them all there listed along with all the product links for the products that I use today. So we're going to, like I said, go through this step by step. So easy to do. Um, it has like all the elements you ever want. <laughs> so here we go. We're going to get started here. And I have a basic white panel. And this is three by five and a half, and I'm using it portrait length, not landscape. So we're going to use it the long way. And um, the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to um, use embossed resist for the actual house. But uh, instead of embossed resist, you can also just stamp your house on a separate piece of paper and cut it out and then put it onto your scene. So, but I, I like the look that it has when it's all shiny in the scene. So that's why I decided to do emboss resist. Plus it makes it really easy to put your background items in there and don't have to worry about them messing up your house. So here we go. I have my um, house elements here and it's two pieces in this set. So you have the roof and then you have the, the actual house. And I'm going to stamp the house and wild weed. I just thought that would be a great color for like a Tuscan looking house. So wild wheat. And the main thing I'm going to do first, I'm going to get some Versamark out here. This is a Versamark pad that I use with all kinds of different um, techniques. So my pad isn't like pristine and I don't worry about it getting ink on it for this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to load my stamp with Versamark. And this um, gives your stamp that tacky feel. So when you stamp it, your embossing powder will stick to it. Where if you just use ink, um, it dries so quick your embossing powder wouldn't stick to it. So I'm loading it with Versamark and then I'm going to load it with my Wild Wheat Color. And then I'm going to take it over here and I'm going to stamp my image. And I'm stamping it kind of over here on the left-hand side of the cardstock, and there is our house. And I'm going to do that same thing with the roof. And I'm going to change colors here. I'm going to do um, Cake and Craze for the rooftop. So I'm going to load my stamp with Versamark. Load it with my Cajun Craze. And then I'm going to, I've got to stand up to do this because I need to put it on here just right. And there's our roof for our image. Now since we used that Versamark before our ink, like I said, it's going to give us our image that tacky feel. And I'm going to bring in some clear embossing powder, my favorite embossing powder of all times. And I keep my clear embossing powder in a tub. It's easy to use that way. And I'm just going to load my image with Versal, with that clear embossing powder. And I'm just going to feel around, make sure I don't have any strays outside. You can use your embossing buddy first before you do this technique. But um, I'm just feeling around here, making sure I don't have any globs on my paper. It's pretty easy. It's a pretty square image, so... There we go. Then I'm going to grab a heat tool here. Keep my heat tool up for a moment. And then I'm just going to heat this just until it turns shiny. You don't want to overheat this, otherwise um, the embossing powder will just sink down into the paper. Okay, so I have that heated up. I'm going to grab my um, black 
Stampin' Right marker. This is my basic black, and I'm just going to color in the windows. I wanted them black. There we go. I like that look, like it's dark inside the house. Then I'm going to take a Versamark marker here. And this is great when you want to um, color over something and put embossing powder on it. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to color over our image, but be very careful and stay inside the image. Don't go outside of the image. Else, um, what will happen is um, you'll get uh, a halo effect around your image. So I stay well within my image when I do this. I don't go all the way to the edge, as you see here. And I'm really just kind of going over those windows to make sure they get embossing powder on them. And then we're just going to heat emboss this one more time. And this will also um, give us a really nice embossed image. It's, it'll be like glass because you have extra embossing on it. Just heat this up real quick. Nose, it's turning. Okay, so if you can see that, it is just super shiny. So that's just what I wanted. So our house is done. Now we can stamp over it. We don't have to worry about um, our stamped images getting on our house because that house will resist the ink that we put over top of it. So here we go. We're gonna start putting our background in. And I'm gonna do my sky first. And this um, stamp set, the Hills of Tuscany, has so many great images in it. So we have our house from it, we've got our sky here. An easy way to do our sky so it looks like it has clouds. This one image is just perfect. I'm gonna load this up with boho blue. And then I'm gonna stamp my sky in. And it's okay to um, stamp it so that some of it is over the house, that's fine. So there is our sky, and look how it puts those clouds in just perfectly. So that was boho blue. And then next, I'm going to get out some old olive, and we're gonna put in like the hills and such around our house. And so we have this stamp here, I hope you can see it. I will show you the image here on this set. It's this one right here. Kind of looks like bushes in the distance. And that's just what we're gonna use it for. So with Old Olive, I'm gonna stamp this around my house here. You can stamp it over the house even. See how that doesn't get on the house when I put that over the house. So just gives you those that look of um, that there's a bunch of hills around the house there. Isn't that cool? So I like that. I don't worry about the little white areas either. I think they add a lot, like the sun is shining down in those areas. So that was Old Olive. And now I'm going to do um, Mossy Meadow. I'm gonna grab some Mossy Meadow ink here. So we're getting a little darker with our images. And I'm gonna grab this um, little tree set. There's two sets in the stamp set. We're gonna be using the one with the five trees in it. And I'm going to stamp them with Mossy Meadow next to our house. And see, since we went darker, they show up really well against that old olive. Then I'm gonna add some here on the other side. There we go. Look at that scene, how it's just coming together. It's awesome. Okay. So that was Mossy Meadow for our bushes. Now I'm gonna grab some crumb cake ink. 
And I'm just going to do direct to paper. Now you could use a blending brush for this step, but I'm just going to use the short end of my ink pad here. And I'm going to have this at a good tilt. You don't want it flat against your cardstock. You want it tilted. So I'm just going to tilt it here and I'm just going to lightly drag this over the bottom of our seam here. Just like that. That'll be our ground area. And now we're going to put some fields in. This is so fun. I just love this set. So I've got my old olive back out. And I'm going to take this little dotted stamp. Um, I'll show it to you on a set. It's just little, little teeny dots. And this is perfect for doing like farm scenes or whatever where you want to put just little dots in for like flowers or um, just rows of vegetation. I'm going to make mine look kind of like it's um, lavender, like a lavender field. So I'm taking old olive here and the first one I'm going to do is kind of straight down. I'm going to stamp it once there and then I need to get wider here at the bottom. So I'm going to stamp it twice side by side there and even a third time in there in the middle. So my row looks like it's going out. So it's thinner at the top and wider at the bottom. And that gives you your depth in your scene. So I'm going to do that for every one of our rows, but we're going to start angling them out. So one towards the top and then a couple here at the bottom. I'm going to continue doing that. And then I have just one at the top there. And then we're going to do that same thing. I think I'll go a little higher up here. Anytime you can overstamp these, it's not a big deal. So I'm going to go a little higher so they get a little closer to those bushes up there. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to angle this side a little bit. And remember, we want to be wider at the bottom. And here's another row get wider at the bottom here. It's really hard to mess this up. Just remember, just stamp one time at the top and then get a little wider at the bottom by adding more row, more stamped images. So there is our old olive. And that'll be like our leaves for our um, lavender. And now I'm going to get gorgeous grape out here. We use the same image, and I'm going to do that same thing, only with gorgeous grape. So I'm stamping over the green areas. There we go. And you know what? If your aim is a little off, it's not a big deal. Because people's mind will just go, that's that's like a field of something purple. So again, you want to be wider at the bottom. Just think, you could do like um, flower fields to where you just did a bunch of green dots and then do red dots on top of them for your flowers that are in the foreground. There we go. So there is our field. And guess what? Our scene is done. So that was super quick using the stamp set. The stamp, I can't recommend the stamp set enough if you like to do scenes. I mean, you could put a sun out there in your sky. There's, um, I would, use this like as a cloud by itself. There's different stamps to do like mountains behind your house. Um, really, really nice set. Okay, so here we go. Um, I'm going to go ahead and back this with a piece of wild wheat. I love wild wheat. It's like one of my favorite neutral colors that goes with everything. So I'm going to take a piece of wild wheat that's three and a quarter by four three and three quarters. Add our little scene there to it. 
just going to center it up. And then I have another panel here. And this is Cajun Craze, and it's three and a half by four. This is a fun layout just for, you know, any scene. I love this simple um, fun fold, too. Okay, so there's our main panel. So I'm just going to set that aside. Now I have our Cajun Craze card base here. And I just need my Simply Score tool. And I'm just going to do score lines here on this. And I'm going to do a score line at four and a quarter. And then one at um, two and an eighth. So that's the only two score lines we need. And if you don't have a score tool, you can fold your card in half. So you can score it. You can fold your card in half and then fold the front back in half where our score line is. You can just do that. But the score lines make it super simple. So I'm just going to take a um, bone folder here, crease my crease as well. Here we go. And this is our card fold. So simple. And then I took a piece of Wild Wheat Designer Series paper. This is out of the 6x6 in color pack. I'll have it listed below um, and a link to it. The patterns are really pretty, but I love this um, little print here that has just the little white lines. So I'm going to put that on the front of our little flap there, just like that. I'm just going to open it up, and I have a one and seven eighth by five and a quarter wild wheat. This is the same size as that designer series paper we put on the front of flap, and I'm going to add this here. And then I have a wild wheat panel that's um, four by five and a quarter. This will go on the inside of our card. Let's add some love here. And we'll just put that there. And now we have our card. It's almost complete here. And you could dress these up any way you wanted to. Um, you could put a bow on here or whatever. But um, I'm going to add my, just my main panel on the front of the card. Now, um, I just want my main panel to stick on this portion of the card. So I'm only going to put adhesive like halfway on the back of this. So when I turn it over, I want to do the left side here. Just add some of that to glue. I'm using multi-purpose glue. Do use any adhesive you like. And I'm just going to center it up the best I can here. There we go. Give it a rub. And look there. There's our finished card. Now when you stamp on the inside, you're going to want to stamp over on the left side of this part here. That way you make sure that it's all covered when you close your card. So you just make sure you're not um, stamping like in these corners because they do show when you have the card closed. But there you have it. There is our super easy scene for today and fun fold. Thanks for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this project and that you give it a try. Take care. Toodles.